All right, greetings, family. This is Bomani Tayemba, and welcome to our Africa for the Africans tourist conference call for July 11th for uh, Ghana, Senegal, the Gambia, and also for Tanzania. And what I'm reading from is our conference call newsletter that was sent via MailChimp uh, email system, but I also I, I sent it as a reminder to everyone a few days ago. And the conference call, um, this is the same conference call format we've been using, and some of it is uh, similar, and some of it is the same information, and some of it is uh, this new information, but updated it with the latest um, photos and, and links for our upcoming uh, journeys. All right, so if everyone has access to the, the conference call link that I sent either email or I sent um, in the group pages, because I sent it to all of our group pages that we have had uh, from the 2019 group pages to the, the 2022 group pages for, you know, for the different countries I just mentioned, and even sent it to our, uh, our wonderful folks in the South Africa group pages, because um, uh, I'm still looking to also just connect people to some additional countries. Uh, so family, uh, once you get to the uh, conference call um, information that's sent, uh, make sure that we just put the updated details of the current conference call uh, coming up and then the, the next one after this one. So this is July 11th today and then August 15th is the next one I have scheduled. And the goal is to usually just have conference call every four to eight weeks. Um, usually end up doing about six to seven or eight conference calls uh, uh, throughout the year. Maybe Maybe a lot or maybe not enough for some people, but what we have is this, honestly, this repetitive information. Everything is based on what we have on our website, Africa for the Africans.org. The ideal thing um, that I was looking to connect with everyone is once they have interest in traveling with us, regardless of where they find information, is for them to go to the, the website and click on any of the current tour links that we have, uh, which I'll go to in a few. And once you click on the relative tour link, of what you're looking to travel, it, you know, you'll see a list of information from tour overview, general terms, visa information if there's a visa required, uh, general terms, and the most important thing I have on there is the rem departure and reminder list, which is kind of a summary to get you prepared. Uh, also, I'm trying to make sure that we have introduction to different languages based on the different countries that you're going to, as far as the, the main local language or the main language that you need to speak in that specific country. So for Ghana, we have three. For um, Senegal and the Gambia, we have Wolof. And for uh, Tanzania, we have um, Kiswahili. And that's usually like a, anywhere from a two to four page introduction. And it's not anything different from what you can find by just researching online. But we put that together in a digital book. And if we print the book, you know, you'll be able to just have it. And it's just something where we also encourage encourage the tour guides to just get people into the action of, you know, saying basic greetings, you know, uh, basic greetings of, and, you know, and different people or some people may just feel, feel connected to where they want to actually spend more time and learn the language itself. Uh, but that's, you know, it's something that we try to do as an introduction, just like the entire journey that you have is an introduction into Africa. And everything is set up for you to make things simple, easy, and I'm, I'm available throughout the week, especially for those who understand that the best thing to do is send me a WhatsApp message or send me an email because wherever I'm at in the world, if I'm moving around traveling, uh, that's the first two things I check all the time because that's based on all the established business of people that we're dealing with, the tourism, investment. Um, they'll send an email or a WhatsApp message, so when you see them coming, uh, you just look at it and reply back and work on what you need to work on. Uh, so for those who are traveling with us or have interest in traveling with us, and if you're not in one of the groups, just send me an email and I'll add you to the group, regardless if you have paid a deposit or not. My goal is to add all of us that's interested in the tour itself to be in the group. Now, once we finalize the group, like one to two months before we leave, for those who are not traveling, I have to you know, remove you from the group. And then you know, if you want to connect to another tour, I'll put you in that group for the next tour. So, so far, I have, you know, I have the Senegal... April 2022 and the Ghana May 2022 uh, group page, which only have like one or two people. But my goal is to just keep on having those things ahead of time. That way, when we, when we send important information, it gets posted in the group page. And 
you don't have to check it every day because you won't see posts every day, but you'll be able to stroll up and down and you'll be able to see the posts to get you prepared. And that's why I tell everyone that you know, these are groups that they're just basically for information only. And then for individuals who want to communicate with me directly and need a direct reply based on what they're looking to do, they send me a separate message. If it's something more for the group, then you know, make your post because we do have people in the group that uh, you know, they have traveled and been to a certain place, then they may be able to also share information. Right. Especially during this COVID era of protocol, uh, it's one of those things where um, you know, in the Ghana page, we have a list of things to, to get people prepared for because you know, I don't think the other countries are like that because I just came from the other countries and they don't require you to take a COVID test and upload it into the system and then they don't require you to take a COVID test on arrival that you have to pay for at a time. So those are the things I want to also get into more and then try to make sure I get questions, especially from the people that are traveling to Ghana that have posted that information. And then for those who didn't get it, I can repost it and send to them. But it tells you the full protocol of what you have to be clear on and prepared for and what you have to have ready, whether, whether printed or saved on your phone. And I'm scrolling down some more and then I have a conference call recording link. So this is a link, uh, once you click on it, it takes you to the conference call recording. And it's also the same as when you go to youtube.com forward slash Bomani 2007. You'll see, a, you'll see when you scroll down, um, or even if you go to playlists, because uh, once you get to the main page, it's, a, it's just a list of different playlists. And you click on the one that's a um, Africa Tours uh, conference call, and you'll see all of the recordings, and you'll see the consistency of what we do. And you hear similar things, but also you'll see hear different and updated information. And as I stroll down, uh, one of the things about the conference call email um, newsletter that I sent, it will show you the group pictures from the last few journeys that we took, and you'll just see all of us in a group. Some are big groups, some are smaller groups, but that's us as a group. And then for the most part, you'll see us in the Africa for the Africans t-shirts, which is what we have on every tour that we do. We print specific t-shirts, uh, different colors, and they're all in a combination of the same colors, red, black, green, and gold. And countries that have like blue in it, we may add blue and things like that. And scrolling down some more, you'll see a, a link that uh, talks about uh, deposits. Uh, so for those who are interested in the journey, that's what um, it takes to just get started. And that's how we reserve your ticket. That's how we make sure individuals that we have on staff get ready for us by just making sure they get the money they need to get started. So that's what the deposit is all about and the options. Now, so the list of uh, journeys that we have, and it's, and it's the same thing that you'll see on the main menu on our website. So what, uh, so what we have, and I'll just explain all for them. The next journey we have is Tanzania, our Roots and Culture Tour, November 18th to the 29th, 2021. Uh, so there's a visa requirement for Tanzania. Uh, Tanzania. So the best thing to do is to make sure that uh, before you even commit to the journey, make sure you look to and read to that visa information, which you'll find on the link, and be clear that you're open to those process. Uh, the visa is $100, and it takes about anywhere from three to seven days to get. It's completely digital, meaning that once you click on the visa link, you upload every single document and information that Tanzania is requiring. If there's an issue, if there's, you have a problem, if you get stuck somewhere, again, the simplest thing to do is email me or send me a WhatsApp message. WhatsApp message is just like the best modern day instant message. So um, I'll be able to respond to you quicker than anything else. And then email, it's probably about the same because those are the two things I check because to make myself efficient for the people that we're doing business with, that way you can get a good response, a quick response. And then you can always call me and you know, leave a message and just give me just give me a short period of time to just connect with you because sometimes we're just working on different projects and sometimes I'm in on these long conference calls and these other calls. But trust me, once I'm finished with what I'm doing and things like that, I'll communicate back with you immediately. People do tours and investment business with us. That is honestly my priority because the destination and the mission is repatriation, getting people to Africa and then working to get the people who want to live and do business in there and the different countries and just build what we build. And that's my dedication in life. Um, and I'm not here to talk about bad things about America. I'm very thankful for my opportunities in America coming from Jamaica at 11 and just taking a lot of advantage of it and, and things that and it's been very fruitful and I've learned a lot, but at the same time too, my family didn't come here to be modern-day slaves. We came here 
to see if we can enterprise. And I realized that the system is a little bit different to where you work and you give everything back to the system. And I realized that if you invest your money in Africa, get land, do business with your own people, you will have a modern-day kingdom that you can look forward to when you're older and your children and your family can have something. So that's how I look at it. Um, and so I may, you know, sometimes you may see one or two videos of me saying certain things about this America with three Ks and things like that. And it's just, sometimes it's in fun, it's in humor, but it's also in education to let us know that um, the most comfortable place in our society and the world that we live in isn't always the best, uh, you know, and things like that. And in Africa, people may say, hey, you know, this is a third world, these are third world countries, these are developing countries, or whatever people want to say. But it also gives us an opportunity to build what we need to build from the ground up and have a level of ownership. And then it's not like our black Wall Streets here and all the things that we try to do. And no one's going to come burn it down and blow it up. The chiefs, the people there in Ghana and the people that we have networked with, that is our goal together. And, you know, you'll see those things if you see some of our highlights, so like the Black Star Pan-African community. We're just showing people how all of us as a people can work together from different parts of, you know, from the Ghanaians to myself from Jamaica and the rest of my folks in the Caribbean and our brothers and sisters here in America and, in, and other places and work it to where we culturally understand each other because it is a big cultural difference. In order to fix that situation, we have to learn and understand each other. That's what I've been able to do to survive in Ghana and then uh, we have good people in Ghana and the same thing in Tanzania, Senegal and Gambia. Uh, Senegal and Gambia is, haven't been there often as much as the last time, but it's been a big gap when I went there the last time and now, but you know, it's always the same scenario. I keep in touch with people, so we always have good people. As soon as we get into the country, they're dead airport, and they got our back, and that has made my life simple and easy, and I've had no issues, but then I, I can't ignore the, the videos that I see on YouTube, and, and I'm, you know, I sympathize with people because we don't have the same strategy and, and technical approach or or, or I should say tactical approach to doing things in Africa. And so I'm always willing to learn from people and also willing to share. And I have so much people in different countries where I always call them and talk with them and, and say, hey, you are making it in this country, so why, what are you doing that other people are not doing? And, that, and that's one of the ways that we can just solve some of these problems. But I've been waiting for this like for the last 15 years, like to have so much people want to come to Africa, do things in Africa, where I've never been more excited in my life uh, because it's one of those things where people talk down to us 15 years ago, 17 years ago, saying, what are we doing we, you know, into Africa and doing all of this, and you're wasting your time, and there's a bunch of negative stuff, which is fine because that motivates you, but then I also have to think about the people who have just been very positive and very just encouraging, especially you know, reading the historical and cultural books. So I'm here to do my part to make sure that... Uh, Anyone that's traveling and doing business with us in Africa, I'm always telling people, we got your back. Because we know more than enough people in the countries that we're going to, to look out for you where you, you shouldn't have an issue. Uh, so, and that's what I would recommend to people who are looking to move to any country. It's nice and adventurous to just get up and get on a jet plane and then go to a country and check it out. And then um, I've done that to countries that I'm just doing solo vacation in or just with friends or just family members and things like that. And that's not, not bad, but... When you're trying to look to forward to invest in building business and building a future, you have to take it a little more critical. So I'm one of them people that's in place, and I'm all my partners in Ghana uh, have your back. Um, and things like even our citizenship conference that we have in Ghana, um, that's putting it out there to let people know that we can assist you with getting the ultimate thing that you want to get in Africa, which is to be a citizen. Other countries may not be open up like you know like Ghana, but it only takes one or two countries for us to build an energy in, and then the rest of the countries in Africa are going to say, hey, the diaspora is the business. Let's reconnect more with our folks and create specific or uh, certain opportunities for the diaspora. Um, and I understand that one of the big things that we have in Africa is we have generational people that are Lebanese and other Arab groups, Chinese and Indians and other Asian groups based on the fact that, you know, and it's beyond just, the British who brought them there to be indentured slaves or indentured workers. It could even go beyond that. So generationally, um, they've had to do what they had to do, and they stuck together and put their money together. And it's kind of like seeing the Chinese and the Indians in, in Jamaica or Guyana or Trinidad and other parts of the Caribbean. It's, it, it's the same thing, too. And that's what I'm telling people that we can all learn a lot from our struggles with what's going on because ultimately 
connect our energy together as a pan-African family around the entire globe. No one can honestly stop us on anything that we put our mind to doing because, you know, we'd have just the ultimate power, which is corporate economics and also this black power with black people just doing things for black folks. So most of what you're going to see on the itineraries, you know, is just me just taking the places that are owned by black people. So uh, the Ghana itinerary is almost 100%. I think there's only one place, a restaurant I go to that's not owned by black people, but every single thing else that we do is just owned by people. Tanzania, the same thing to one hotel and then maybe one or two restaurants. And uh, Senegal and Gambia, it's relatively the same thing too. So I've done my best to try to just produce our journey beyond the airlines as a 90% plus black business enterprise supporting other black business enterprises and encouraging us to do the same uh, and things like that. And so you scroll down. Um, so those links are right there. Um, we have the Ghana Repatriation Investment Tour for December 24th to January 5th. Senegal and the Gambia Roots, Roots Tour for April 1st to 11th. 2022 now, so that's Ramadan, and I've been talking with my tour guide. I'm honestly still trying to work it out and figure it out. You know, so for those who are still looking to come, uh, we definitely keep you posted. The journey is still active, uh, but if we have low numbers based on the fact that it's Ramadan, then, you know, we have to do what we have to do and reschedule and do some, some whatever adjustment. Uh, but that's the only tour that we have any of those issues with, uh, and I'm also learning because, you know, the countries that we're going to outside of Ghana is predominantly Islam or Muslim countries. So we have to also look at the fact when holidays and things come and, you know, and just like what I was talking about, us just being clear and flowing with the way the culture, the way things work in the country. Uh, beyond Senegal and Gambia, which, you know, like I mentioned, we still actively have going. Um, the next one we have after that is our Ghana Repatriation Investment Tour, May 24th to June 5th. And that is... Um, that journey I just came back from, and I was there for 10 days on tour, and 20 days I stayed back, um, and it wasn't just for this relax and enjoying the country, which I did also, but it was more so to help my group, the Black Star Pan-African community, get connected to utilities and business people, and also uh, those companies that can help us build our community that we have invested our money in, so we can have an incredible community that's a business community that can enterprise with other communities and other business people in the in our, in our known black world. So the highlights you're going to see on the YouTube videos are going to be a combination of uh, the 10-day the journey and then also a combination of just me moving around Ghana and this some, you know, sometimes you can't always record but you know I'm always trying to do my best to record what I can record because some conversations and some things that we have are so private and then we just can't literally just upload it to YouTube. So whatever you see on there is just those things that are clear. And then especially if I'm doing things with other people that are more confidential, like sometimes I'm talking with certain attorneys or business people and they mention a bunch of different names and they tell me, well, I need to edit this and need to edit this. And I was like, yo, I can't spend my whole month at doing edit on a 15-minute video. But, um, you know, so I tell people, like, don't say anything in the recordings if you don't want to publish and share because, you know, the raw, uncut, is kind of a way to just give people our true feelings. Now, when we're in conversations and talking, we don't have re rehearsals and things like that. We just, you know, go for, you know, go go for it and share what we're sharing. So, you scroll down to the list, you'll see the links for videos and photos. And I have, I think last I checked, it was almost it was either 2,700 videos on YouTube or close to that or a little bit over it. Um, and that's between videos from 2006 to 2021, 15 straight years of this uh, video upload, uh, which are not monetized. There's no commercials in it. And I tell people, don't try to convince me to monetize videos and get no YouTube money. I'm not interested in that. I'm just thankful that there's a network out there that allows people like myself to abuse it, the network and upload all these videos that I have in Africa to show my brothers and sisters in the world our experience in Africa versus what other people are saying. And when you see me rolling in Africa, you usually see me with anywhere from 10, 20, 30, 40 people. And even when I'm behind and doing my journey, I got I have people around us. So you're able to see just the energy of this us coming together and doing, you know, having a specific mission and sharing a specific information. And I record a lot of videos mainly because of the family and friends, including my family and friends. And 
your family and friends that some of them are very encouraging and positive about Africa and some of them is like on some old negative stuff and I'm just being honest so it's like literally I just share our experience and especially when we're having a good time doing fun and exciting things um, and you know because you know I understand that the brainwashing is rough but it's like we're trying to make a way off out of an oppressive situation where we see that we own little to nothing and we see more and more other foreigners are coming to the country and taking over things for black folks and I'm not saying that's not going on in African places but the strongest union is going to be Africa uh, so investing in Africa is going to you know, is, is a way of saving us as a people and so now somewhere there's a I have the link for Facebook so the link for Facebook is going to take it to where you see pictures of the 2006 tour all the way up. Now I've been traveling to Africa before that. I started in 2004, but the 2006 represent the countries that we literally been traveling with since we started our business, Africa for the Africans, uh, in October of 2006 when I was 28 years old and now 43, and that was always my goal, especially with the two years before that, where I just literally just just recorded videos and did you know put them on DVDs and videotapes and share them and gave them away or sold them or whatever just you know anything that's to get information out and then now YouTube just when YouTube came in is like okay perfect I just upload all of this and share digital information and right, so the next thing I'm going to go into is the list of conference called topics uh, that we have and um, and so the, the first um, I think in the topic introductions about us updates and all our Africa tours and schedules so those are the things that we have on the website where if you even click on about us you see my bio and you see our you see our mission and vision statement and that's been established since you know, 2006 so I let everyone know that uh, whatever we decided at that time including our partners that are no longer with me in this business uh, which is fine because you know it's a hard journey it's a rough road and uh, not all of us are going to survive it and in order for you to survive this journey, um, you just have to be willing to give up a lot of things. And just like, you know, I have to give up certain things in America to make that final journey in Africa where we settled. And, but I'm willing to do that. Not everybody's willing to do that. I'm willing to give up jobs and things like that, which I've done. I'm willing to start new, fresh business and make it work so I can use 100% of my time to deal with our connection, our mission, our vision, our destiny uh, of repatriation in Africa. Uh, two, again, the links are going to show you for youtube.com forward slash Bomani2007 with all the videos, facebook.com forward slash Bomani for all the pictures. And again, these are the two networks that allow me to, to release an unlimited amount of videos and pictures and things like that. And then I have our independent website, which we just stack up full of tour details. And I'm going to skip through this uh, in a uh, f uh, fast period. Uh, three, tour overview, general terms, itinerary uh, for Tanzania, Senegal, the Gambia, and Ghana tours. Now, those are the things that we're seeing to click on the tour link and then read through in full details. Um, sometimes on certain tours um, or conference calls, I should say, we go to you know, more details on certain things. But since we have so much uh, tour journeys, my goal is to just be more general. And that's why I'm hoping that everyone that's traveling with us have read all the information and then have questions for us where we can go into the specific questions and then we'll, since we have the call recorded um, when it's when we add it to the list it's just documentation out there so the visa countries again Tanzania Ghana and the Gambia so please be clear on that and please let me know if you have any questions and things like that the email that I sent is honestly straightforward and I honestly do not have any problems anybody calling me and having questions not all of us are going to process technical stuff the same way I've been in this technical world of this the same situation since I was in in high school and my first technical and technical connection as far as this electrical electronic system and having to read certain prints and follow certain directions and you flow with this modern day times uh, 30 years later it's a kind of the same sequence and everything else I've learned in between that time and now it's just it's really simple for me to get and things like that uh, but I. I do understand not everybody is going to understand that so don't feel a way if we need to talk or we need to go over things I'm available and uh, no matter what anyone may think how, how busy I am everyone that's coming on here paid for a journey they pay for investment they pay for 
connect into Africa. And my goal is to make time for you if you need to talk to me for hour, two hours. If I'm not available right away, I'll work it to where sometime that day or the next day I'll talk with you. And it's that's how we have built this business uh, from the, you know for the last um, 15 years. So one of the things I tell everybody that asks me about business, you got to take care of your people. You got you to make sure that the people that are doing business and investing with you, you make sure that they're good and you treat them with love, love, the high level of love and respect. And then the same thing I say with everyone that's traveling with us, we're doing everything that we can do in Africa for you in whatever country. And my staff, I go over everything with them and they're always good at, at what they do. They make sure they go above and beyond. And sometimes all of us have to be up like a ridiculous amount of time throughout the entire day we got a day schedule, we got an evening schedule, we have a night schedule. Members can rest and things like that and say they don't want to go out, but we're, we're booked for the schedule for the whole time. So we're giving you eight to ten days of our just nonstop time to make sure that you're happy in the country. And the next thing I'm going to say is for those who are looking to stay longer, it's what I literally dream of, like stay longer and I'll make sure my people there take care of you in any country. Uh, all you have to do is let me know ahead of time. You take your return date on your ticket. Now, like one person sent me a payment, and then in their the letter that they sent me, they just let me know about the dates, and I quickly just changed it on their receipt and made a note of it to make sure that we reserve a, a ticket for them and they stay back longer. And then also, just let the people that we have there say, hey, we have some people staying back longer. Make sure you look out for them, take them around, give them another part of that wonderful experience of Africa, which is more of the local feel. Now, when you when you go through the preparation of tourism, and honestly, it, I feel it helps you to understand the local feel a lot better because that's the same thing I've done when I started going to Ghana. I stayed longer, like for the first few years. And then up until recently, I also started to stay back just a little bit longer also to handle business. But it's, you know, it's a relaxing feel because you feel like you've gotten a complete experience. All right, and scrolling down, down since we're coming up on our... Tanzania, November journey, and Ghana, December journey, uh, what we usually have arranged is we try to close out uh, and pay for all the tickets at least 45 days before we travel. Uh, so it shows on you 30 to 45 days. We're paying for tickets, and then we'll send you with your, your e-ticket information, and then your goal is to add your seats, add your meals, and do all those things. And then sometimes in the group booking and things like that, you're, not, you're only able to book and coach and then, and then some airlines like KLM, they don't always have uh, options when you book the ticket ahead of time. But what they do is, uh, like 30 days before you travel, when you log into their network, or even before that, uh, you can select seats for upgrade, and you'll see the different prices. Uh, and the reason I'm saying that because we're going to be mainly using uh, KLM on this, uh, these next two journeys. The Senegal and Gambia tour, April and May, um, or I should say, Senegal and Gambia tour April, and then the Ghana tour in May. We use a different system. We just end up using Delta Direct from JFK to Ghana, JFK to uh, Senegal. Uh, but that's not always the option that we have. We don't have that option definitely with Tanzania. And for Ghana uh, coming up, it's a little tricky because we're going to the most expensive and the most busiest time of, in Ghana, uh, which is in December. So. We usually have to adjust our routes as best as we can and things like that. So we are flying to Amsterdam and from Amsterdam to Ghana and then to Tanzania. When we get to Amsterdam, we're flying to Kilimanjaro Airport. And then if anyone literally just want to say, but when I want to say back, you don't always have to do an email. And again, the WhatsApp is perfect because that's how I keep up with all the people I do things with. And then I'll just reply back to you and let you know. But I'm looking forward to more people staying back in Ghana uh, coming up, and especially if you want to live and do business there. Uh, our goal is to work things out to get you a residency and if you want to stay longer, because last year, December, a lot of people stayed back and I want to be a little more prepared for people staying back to where we can help them with uh, housing and help them with certain things. So I've partnered up with a few other people to where when our groups are there, they can give them a full, you know, they can help them to the highest level because unfortunately I'm you know, some people think I live in Africa, but um, I live here in Georgia. I just go out on tours for the ten, the eight to ten day schedule, and then may stay back a few days, or and then if I'm lucky in some countries, may be able to stay a few weeks if I got business there to deal with, like in Ghana last uh, last month. All right, I'm scrolling us more a little faster. Um, uh, Twelve, we have 
one of the things I always say for every, anyone that's traveling with us is to bring um, a set of whites because uh, when we go to any ancestral grounds, uh, which we have in every country, um, that's one thing that we uh, wear. And then um, red, black, green, and gold, the same thing too. Um, we just usually, I usually try to put it on the, the schedule, but I may have to just, the, some of the schedules don't have uh, those things on there. Uh, but bring a set of red, black, green, and gold. Uh, these are all uh, to pay respect and homage um, to our ancestors, but especially when we go to African Holocaust dungeons. And then if you just want to know specifically the order of things, um, you know, we're definitely going to be finalizing things. Whatever journey we're doing, like the month before we travel, we're going to final details of COVID tests, preparation, and how to do this. Then we do a video call so everyone that's traveling in that tour itself, we can all see each other as beautiful black people. And if anyone is not one of us, no, you know, <laughs> no offense to anyone because you know, nowadays people just think that, you know, you just say things to just be mean to people and nasty to people and attack people. Um, but this is a family journey of me and my brothers and sisters. This is the best connection I can offer my brothers and sisters that I've struggled with in America, on the plantation and out here in, in, in the world. And we deserve this. We deserve to be able to just come together and enjoy our journey, have your own brothers and sisters, myself and my crew, and the people that we have in the country take care of you. Make sure you have the best time of your life and make sure you're good. And if we're on a bus and we need to talk about anything, and I don't care if it's homosexuality, interracial relationship, whatever, we feel comfortable because we're in our own environment. And we don't have someone that we may be worried about. Like, maybe is this person recording us? And is this person, like, there as an agent trying to monitor us? So anyone that's, you know, looking to travel with us that's not a black African person um, and look like the people that's in every single video and every single group picture, we can't accept you. And I've had to send people back refunds. Uh, but I you know, appreciate you trying to do something. But it's like we, we're not going to do this. We're not going to do, like, the situation I had working at the airlines where every time I talk with one or two of my brothers and sisters, I see two white people cornering me and they're getting in the conversation trying to monitor them like, who sent you? Uh, that's not going to happen here. We, you know, we're going to do what we need to do this and do ourselves and things like that. So, but if anyone wants to do anything, the thing is always let us know and I got people in Ghana that will accommodate you because it's not a racial situation. It's just this is just what we do as Africa for the Africans. You see, you know, you go on a website, you see the red, black, green, and gold. You listen to the music, it's all black power music. You see us in the colors, you see us, you know, it's, it's just a modern day 21st uh, century energy of just the vision that we have and what we learned from Marcus Garvey and what we've just been inspired to do. That's why the teachers say inspired by Marcus Garvey. You know, when I learned about, you know, the greatness of this, this th that energetic energy 100 years ago and that it wasn't able to c complete its mission, you know, we just thought it was just the perfect thing to do to con connect that mission. And we've taken hundreds of people to different parts of Africa and connected a lot of people beyond that in the right way to make sure that they get settled in Africa. And I feel very proud to be able to do that and things like that. And, again, this is not any attack against any person or the, the, any country or anything. We're just here to just, you know, live out our self-determination, our mission and vision. And uh, strolling down some more, you just see more of our group pictures and always proud to just show this group picture because people literally told me that you can't get a group of black people together to do things. And I'm like, okay, we're just going to have to prove you wrong or show you that we, we have evolved as a people. You know, and I tell people just like, you know, at one point in Africa, we may have had things like civil war and certain things like that, but it's like, hey, you know, we're at a new age and we're trying to solve our own problems. All right, and uh, to the end of the, uh, towards the end of the newsletters, you're going to see these Facebook groups um, uh, for the different countries that uh, we have on the uh, schedule. And anyone can just add themselves to those groups, and then we just approve the membership. And when we're doing tours, anyone want to post anything in reference to the tour? Or what I do is just post the videos and pictures and do my best to share information on those pages. And uh, there's a lot of pages to kind of keep up with and post, but I just try to spread the information around and hopefully somehow it gets to the right people. Uh, and when you're looking at the list of the journeys that we have done, it's incredible. Um, it's uh, well over 20-something uh, journeys. And you add it all up, it's 30-something, 30 30-plus uh, 30 journeys in Africa uh, over the last uh, 17 years. Uh, some groups are not here because we just didn't, you know, just me and my associates traveling in Africa and doing the first two years before this. And 
and for those who ever make it to the office, I can always show you some of the old footage that we have that I've not been able to work out to get on YouTube. But I was like, you know, the, the quality looks so bad because nowadays we're just recording everything in 4K HD from the, the camcorder we have to even the, 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 the phone camera that I have that I can just throw my backpack and just make a move with it and go out there and do interviews and traveling, that, which is what I was doing when I stayed back in Ghana. That way I didn't bring a lot of attention to me just having this big, this nice big camcorder and this, that like I'm just recording a movie or something. And scrolling down some more, um, you know, we have all the links right there again. So all links, all information is posted in this newsletter for the purpose of making sure everybody's clear, prepared, and ready. And um, all group pages on WhatsApp is set. So if you're not on WhatsApp, download the app on your phone because when you get into the country, um, for some people staying longer, you know, you can get your local phone. But if you're there for 10 days, you, you know, you can either pay for the, you can also pay for the international uh, service to where you have, um, you know, unlimited data there internationally. But for the most part, the, all of the hotels that we have have Wi-Fi, and you can check your message and do those things. And then plus you're on a getaway, so I don't know if you may want to just not be bothered with a bunch of messages on your phone and just enjoy it, but uh, those are the two options that you have. You, you can bring you an international phone, or I should say um, an unlocked phone, and then get a SIM card when you get there and add, you know, add minutes on there for voice and for data. And beyond that, you can, you can use WhatsApp because when we're doing, you know, a lot of times we're just posting a group page, this is what we're doing tomorrow, even though we have it in the book and everything, or consistently looking out for messages. And I tell people, if you're looking to find me, just send me a message because I don't know if I'll be in a hotel or be outside, but if you send me a message, I'll be able to let you know, hey, I'm here or I'm upstairs, um, I can meet you downstairs or come upstairs and things like that. And then for those who are traveling with us, if you have run into any problems, we're missing your flight, the best thing to do is post it in the group page and say, hey, this happened to me. That way myself and everyone else can see it, including our people on the ground, and we can all just be, hey, you know what, work out what you have to work out. Uh, we catch it tomorrow. We'll send a vehicle to pick you up and then have you join the group. And unfortunately, I've had to do that on a few occasions. So the information that we're providing and letting you know is to your importance. Like I've had one person miss seven days of a 10-day tour because of a COVID shot. So when I'm saying that, if we leave on the 24th, go take your COVID test the 22nd and make sure that it's one of those places that give you a result back within 12 to 24 hours, you're good because that's literally going to put you within the 72-hour range, which is just, it's not smart for the people who put these things out for three days. But I'm one of the people, I'm not going to complain. I'm just going to follow the rules. I'm a military person that's you know, been drilled in your head your whole career to follow directions and follow leadership and follow organization. And, and, I, and that's what I've done, and I have no problem going to any country. And the most important thing is to make sure you get to the airport three to four hours ahead of time. Uh, and then make sure that you have all your printouts, your COVID tests, and whatever procedure uh, or things that you have to have done. So, family, I know it's a lot of the general talking, but honestly, uh, or literally everything that I just talked about is relevant to all the countries that we have, Senegal, Gambia, Tanzania, and uh, Ghana. So what I want to do is let me just open things up for some questions, and uh, we can go through dialogues of questions as long as someone have a question. So let me let me take us out of lecture mode. All right, so family, I got everybody on mute mode. So in mute mode, you have to press star six to unmute yourself, and then star six to mute yourself back. So looking for the first um, question, uh, just unmute yourself. Let us know your name. Uh, where you're calling from and the journey you're going on, and any other introduction, you can uh, do that also. Um, hi, Bomani. My name is Kathy, and I will be joining you in a Tanzania tour. Uh, I wanted to ask you a question about the dress code. Is there a dress code that women shouldn't wear shorts? Oh, man, I just finished watching a video in Tanzania about that. I, I think I'm not even almost finished. I'm looking forward to getting back to it. Uh, I'm learning a lot about Tanzania. I just finished talking to one of my sisters that she's on her way back there. She's been living there back and forth. And um, that's, uh, that seems to be the only place that you get these uh, questions. Um, in the daytime, um, it's, you just have to dress a little more conservative. Um, and this is a Muslim country. So at nighttime, uh, it's a little different. And that's based on my experience of being out, me and my brother and a few friends. And we've seen 
it looked no different from being here in Atlanta or being there in Ghana when we out uh, doing social nightlife. Uh, so I would just recommend this, just very conservative in the daytime. Uh, when we are on the beaches of uh, Zanzibar, uh, you're fine because that's a beach resort, so you'll see p people out there in their uh, bikini and swimwear and things like that, and there's no issue. But if you're just out there in the, the, like in the city, in the streets, and you're moving around shopping and things like that, people may look at you strange, like like somebody didn't give you the memo or something. So that's uh, and then hopefully we have someone else here that's on the call that's been there that can give a little insight to that also if anyone like to share. But that's uh, what I've came up with. And All right. Um, All right, excellent. And also here, Kathy, look forward to uh, talking with you. Uh, that uh, you're one of the few people um, that have joined us since I've been since I um, gotten back from Ghana, and looking forward to connecting with you. But uh, let me know if you have any other questions uh, beyond the dress code. All right, well, perfect. All right, uh, next person name. Um, where you're calling from and what journey you're traveling on? Hello, hello. Uh, greetings, I can hear you. Can you introduce yourself? Uh, name, uh, where you're calling from and uh, what journey you're traveling on? Okay, this is Deborah, Atlanta. I'll be on the Tanzania trip. Um, I had a couple of questions on, I noticed on one of the things you said there'll be a naming ceremony, but I didn't notice it in the list for Tanzania. Uh, name doing ceremony. The naming ceremony there. That's only for Ghana. Oh, okay. Okay. All right. And then, okay. I didn't write it down, but I've got my other question. Okay. Thank you. Uh, no problem. Now. Once you get it, just sign okay. back in. It's all good. Okay. Thanks. Uh, absolutely. At family, the line is open. Uh, this is Anita from Philadelphia. I'm traveling with Talia to the Tanzania tour. All right, uh, perfect. Greetings, Anita. Uh, what's your question? Greetings. Um, I, my question is, are there any concerns, I guess, with, with these new uh, COVID variants that are in the States with us um, traveling to Tanzania? Are the numbers still low there? Or just, I guess, what's going on with this COVID thing? Oh, yeah. Um, I, I, can't say, I can't say nothing about no COVID uh, exists, uh, but what I can say is that um, none of the people that I have in any of the countries have any issues with COVID, and none of their family and none of the people that they have told me that they know have issues. And um, it's the weirdest thing, but um, it's like the world is trying to make us silent, so I won't, because you know, this video is going to be uploaded. Um, the best thing I can say to everyone, you are safe in Africa. I can tell you how safe you are in America because I, I don't feel safe and I don't know how safe it is. But you are safe in Africa, especially once you connect with us. And um, we'll, never, we'll never put anyone in an unsafe situation because you know, my son traveled with me. I have my, my good friends. And then all of us are together. So we just, our goal is to make sure that everywhere we go, it's completely safe for all of us. Okay. So, uh, you know, so, so far, so good, and, um, and I'll keep everybody posted in the uh, group WhatsApp if anything changes. Okay. Thank you. Well, absolutely. Yeah, you're welcome. Okay, this is Deborah again. I, I figured out my question, but she asked about the COVID. Um, you said it was a 12 to 24-hour test, and where did you say that's listed, or is that something we need to call and ask? Various labs. I said Atlanta area. I'll send you what we sent to everyone else when we travel to Ghana that's in the Atlanta area. And uh, what, what we use is viral solutions. Uh, it's you, whether you have insurance or no, in, no insurance, um, they, they do the COVID testing and they have locations everywhere. I live here in Jonesboro, so um, I even I went to Atlanta, I went to uh, Riverdale and, you know, and, and, and another location. And they literally, uh, you pull up and they just take your your COVID test, uh, and it has to be a PCR test. A rapid test uh, won't work, and you need to. It needs to be as authentic as possible because um, there's been an issue with fake COVID tests. So now even Ghana, like telling you, you got to upload it to their system and things like that. And I think that's the only country, but other countries are going to tell you to do the same so they can make sure that it's all is good. With viral solutions. When you take the COVID test, you can get it back from within 12 to 24 hours. So if you take it two days before the journey, because it's a 72-hour time frame to where the test has to be taken. The test results have to be 
uh, negative within the last 72 hours of, before your flight goes out. Uh, and so that can put people in, the, throw people off a little bit. Uh, but I'll post the link in the, um, you know, in the Tanzania and the Ghana page for Virus Solutions. And if there's not, a, that's in Atlanta, but I'm sure they may have another company similar to that in other states. And um, when I'm telling you that these people have like about a bunch of locations all over the place, and it's like kind of like one of those government money-making business where they just provide a service for the public and you know, they work it out with the government to get paid. So it, it's at no cost to you. And uh, so, uh, Deborah, hopefully that can answer your questions. And then look out for the link. I'll also post it to your WhatsApp uh, directly also. Sure. Thank you. Absolutely. And also, Stephanie, is there anything else you'd like to share? Oh, they said I had a wonderful time. We really enjoy Ghana. And um, I just want people to be prepared. May I have a good time as well. Perfect. While we're on preparation, uh, any other preparation information you can share with them? Because um, I've been there so long, sometimes it's just easier for someone else to like share things with someone else that hasn't been there. Well, that would be the main thing to me, but that, that COVID task. Uh, we're going to post everything and we're going to go over everything also. And then when you're with us on, in the country, any issues, any problems, anything you want to talk about, anything you need help with or whatever, just let us know. Any private mission you want to go on to do your own research or do certain things, uh, let us know. I have a question. When we get the results for the um, the COVID test, will it be a hard copy or are they going to upload, send us an email with the results yeah. on it? They're all email copies and you can print them out. Okay. And uh, since uh, you're going to Ghana with us, um, you, know, you have to upload it to the global site, uh, which um, is one of those things where, especially a month before we leave, I'll be reposting it, and then everyone just has to follow the procedures once they get the COVID test to upload it to the site that Ghana wants you to do the authorization for. Uh, so Ghana is a little more intricate, and that's why I tell everyone that's traveling with us, um, the information that we posted, make sure they're clear on it ahead of time, and because once you go back over it, it'll be a lot simpler. But, um, okay, thank you. No, oh, yes. Uh, so, family, the line is uh, open. Um, next person, name, where you're calling from, and the journey you're traveling on. All right, so, family, the line is open. Just looking for questions. Uh, went to a lot of dialogue in reference to our tour and our tour preparation and information. Just looking to get some questions so we can go over other things in detail before we close. And uh, again, it starts it starts six to um, unmute yourself. All right, so it seems like everybody is clear on everything. So if you don't have a question in another minute, um, the best thing I can say is just uh, send me a message on WhatsApp or you can just communicate with me other ways and um, we'll get you prepared and everything. And beyond that, I'm just working on... Um, finalizing and organizing our journey for Tanzania for November and Ghana for December, uh, working on doing both of them at the same time um, to where the next month or two everything is ready and we can close out on tickets and uh, get ready to uh, make a move. All right, so what I'm going to do, uh, just for the recording, I'm going to go to my um, go to my WhatsApp group uh, for Ghana, and I'm going to pull up the information for the preparation and just read through it real quick. And then I'm going to close the call unless someone else have a question after that. And then also, um, with Ghana, you definitely have to make sure that um, you follow the new procedures for the uh, Ghana visa. All right, so the notes, let um, me just go down some more of what we didn't cover. So what you're going to do when you get your COVID test uh, here uh, for your, your journey going to Ghana, you're going to uh, create an account with Global Haven uh, by clicking on a link uh, to upload your uh, COVID test. And it's one of those things where you just have to take your time and then just follow the directions on there. The main thing that you're looking to do is um, when you finish uploading it, you're going to print or save a copy of the QR code uh, to show the airline agent. Right? After that, uh, what we recommend you do is log into myfrontierhealthcare.com. And while I'm doing this, I'm, and unfortunately this is only for the Ghana page, but let me 
post it. There you go. And you have to pay for a COVID test before you go to Ghana. That way, when you get to Ghana, they can take it on arrival. So it's something that you have to pay $150 for for people with U.S. Uh, U.S. citizen, unless you're ECOWAS, uh, which is $50, or a Ghanaian citizen, you, you're looking at paying $150 per person, including your child, if you're traveling with your child. But the website is myfrontierhealthcare.com. Once you um, click on that link, it is actually for a credit card, a debit card payment. And then what I recommend for you to do once you get the email or the, the message is to print it off to show that uh, you paid for it. Um, it's in their system, but the best thing to do always with all these things is make sure you have a safe copy on your phone, email, or a printed version, or both. And the next one is a health declaration form. So you're going to see a link in there that tell you about the health declaration form, and then you just give them updated information about your health. And you can do this um, about 10 days before the journey, but I recommend doing like one or two days. And uh, those are honestly the things right there, um, and it's not that bad. It's just a little bit different if you went to Ghana before. You heard people go to Ghana. Uh, so uploading your COVID test from the U.S. and paying for the, paying the 150 doing the health declaration form, and, um, and that is it. But something as simple as that can cause a delay and cause people to miss flights and things like that. Um, and again, find a location where you can take free COVID tests and get results back within 24 hours and take it two days before you travel and you're in good situation. And beyond that, family, um, that's, um, that's it. Um, all I have is just what we will put in the notes uh, for the conference call email and what you see on the website. And beyond that, I'm available throughout the day and can connect with you. Okay, I have a question regarding the, um, the COVID test. Okay, we take the test a couple of days before we leave for Ghana. And then, um, you know, we're paying $150 for the, um, the COVID test in Ghana. So in regards to taking that test, do we take the test as soon as we arrive in Ghana or just before we leave Ghana? Oh, no, this is uh, the test that you're going to pay for when you arrive in Ghana. Okay. And uh, good question. Uh, and then when we leave Ghana, then uh, we'll take you somewhere as an entire group. We'll drive the bus to the, based on where we are, which is we're going to be in Kamasi, so it's going to be the Kwame Nkrumah University of Science mm -hmm. and Technology. Right before we do our tour day, we'll literally drive there and get the test taken. And then right after, we'll just go enjoy our tour day. The mm -hmm. only challenge that we're going to have is um, the test has to be paid through Echo Bank. So we didn't know that before, so we, it gave us a little delay. But now that we know that, we'll let everybody know to have their money together and the exact amount of money it is. Uh, last, I remember, the total amount um, for, for Ghana Ghana and the Gambia was close to 50 to 60 U.S. dollars. Okay. Uh, so, and then we, so once we're in the country, we will we, reconfirm that because, yeah, as you know, things have changed, so we'll just make sure mm -hmm. we're clear on that. So that is the final part of it. Okay. Thank you. Absolutely. And then for those in Ghana that's looking to stay longer, uh, we're, there's an airport clinic, and they're open 24 hours, and they're available to take the COVID test. So you can literally just get there the day before and take it and then come back the next day when you're traveling and get your results. And uh, other than that, family, um, that is what we have for you. So do appreciate everybody's time and want everybody to enjoy a wonderful Sunday. And I am be, I'll be on standby and um, I'll look out for all emails and messages and things like that and phone calls and we'll connect you. All right, so let me uh, close out and everyone just enjoy your night. Let me just unmute everyone. All right, so family, I can, uh, everyone can hear each other. So good night. Uh, thank you for your time. Thank you for joining us and thank you for sharing your information and everything. And, uh, good night and thank you so much.